Good morning and welcome to Midday Connection here at First Presbyterian Church on April 15th. And it is tax day today, but more importantly, it is Good Friday. And I've really enjoyed the opportunity this week to do a Midday Connection throughout the week of Holy Week as we prepare for the events of tonight and as we look forward to Easter Sunday. Um, the way that God speaks to us through his word, I think, has really been important to me, to, uh, to Natalie, and to uh, David, who shared with us on Wednesday. But um, I'm glad that you guys can join us. So again, uh, we're looking forward to doing our um, daily lectionary reading and, uh, and seeing what, uh, what words of wisdom God has for us today. So let me open us in a word of prayer. Uh, gracious Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the many ways that you speak to us. Uh, thank you for your word in, in Holy Scripture, uh, the authoritative word, your authoritative word that um, is intended to uh, challenge us and to correct us and to encourage us uh, and to train us up in all the things that are necessary for our salvation and for living lives that are pleasing to you. So I pray, Lord, that on this Good Friday day, as we read these lectionary texts, that you would reveal to us that which you would have us to learn, that we would be continually transformed into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Starting this morning with Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning. O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm, and not human scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Austerity will serve him. 
Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his host. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above heaven and earth. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Our Hebrew scripture reading is from Lamentations chapter 3, 1 through 9 and 19 through 33. I am one who has seen affliction under the rod of God's wrath. He has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. Against me alone he turns his hand again and again all day long. He has made my flesh and my skin waste away and broken my bones. He has besieged and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. He has made me sit in darkness like the dead of long ago. He has walled me about so that I cannot escape. He has put heavy chains on me. Though I call and cry for help, he shuts out my prayer. He has blocked my way with hewn stones. He has made my paths crooked. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust. There may yet be hope to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve from the New Testament, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 through 20. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that was to be yours made careful search and inquiry, inquiring about the person or time that the Spirit of Christ within them indicated when it testified in advance to the sufferings destined for Christ and the subsequent glory. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves, but you, in regard to the things that have now been announced to you through those who brought you good news by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Discipline yourselves. Set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. For it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. If you invoke as the Father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from your from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. 
And our gospel reading today is very short from John chapter 13, verses 36 through 38. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Very truly I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. Psalm 105. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful work that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute to Israel in an everlasting covenant, saying to you, I give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. When they were few in number, of little account, and strangers in it, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones, do my prophets no harm. When he summoned famine against the land and broke every staff of bread, he had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters, his neck was put in a collar of iron, until what he had said came to pass. The word of the Lord kept testing him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions, to instruct his officials at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. Then Israel came to Egypt. Jacob lived as an alien in the land of Ham. And the Lord made his people very fruitful and made them stronger than their foes, whose hearts he then turned to, his, to hate his people, to deal craftily with his servants. He sent his servant Moses and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They performed his signs among them and miracles in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made the land dark. They rebelled against his words. He turned their waters into blood and caused their fish to die. Their land swarmed with frogs, even in the chambers of the kings. He spoke, and there came swarms of flies and gnats throughout their country. He gave them hail for rain and lightning that flashed through their land. He struck their vines and fig trees and shattered the trees of their country. He spoke, and the locusts came, and young locusts without number. They devoured all of the vegetation in their land and ate up the fruit of their ground. He struck down all the firstborn in their land, the first issue of all their strength. Then he brought Israel out with silver and gold and there was no one among their tribes who stumbled. Egypt was glad when they departed, for dread of them had fallen upon it. He spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light by night. They asked and he brought quails and gave them food from heaven in abundance. He opened the rock and water gushed out. It flowed through the desert like a river, for he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. So he brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing, he gave them the lands of the nations, and they took possession of the wealth of the peoples, so they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. And our final psalm today is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a lot going on. There's a lot. There's a lot <laughs> There's going a lot. on. 
Um, so Psalm 130 connected to immediately following after Psalm 105. Psalm 105 is obviously the retelling of the end of the book of Genesis and then the beginning of the book of Exodus where uh, we know that God is accomplishing his will in the lives of uh, Abraham's family, Abraham's descendants. Um, Joseph being sold into slavery in Egypt uh, and then being elevated to a ruler, but then everybody else from his family getting there and then descending back into slavery again, and then God uh, redeeming them through his power, uh, the different plagues that affected Egypt, and then ultimately uh, the killing of the firstborn sons um, or, or offspring. Um, and then, uh, so we, we see from Psalm 105 uh, this this song of remembrance. Don't forget your history, right? You get to Psalm 130, and it's that 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 refrain of, of uh, you know, hope in the Lord. You know, I hope in the Lord. I hope in the Lord. Why? Well, because there is forgiveness. He is the one who redeemed Israel from all of Israel's iniquities. And so I in, in, in light of those two psalms that we did at the very end, um, it seems like everything kind of fits, right? Right. We, we saw the same thing in the first two psalms. You, I was struck by the sheer and utter despair in Psalm 22 as it's foretelling it, and you read that through the lens of Jesus, and it's all of the things and all of the suffering and the pain and the horror that he faces on the cross, and just the complete despair that we feel. I mean, he's dead. He's, And then you come to 148, and it's this psalm of praise, and it's calling for all of creation to sing his praises. And as awful as the death was, with the resurrection, all of creation is called to rejoice and right. to praise. And it's that saying, suffering and hope. And we saw the same thing, the, the 105, all of the things that his chosen people went through and all of those difficulties, but Psalm 130, we find hope. Right. And so, you know, we started and finished that same right. opposing, you know, they're, they're at odds, but yet you have to have one, I think, to see just how great those praises can be and how much rejoicing can be done. Right. I'm certainly glad that this week, we got to end uh, the our you know um, on Good Friday with Lamentations three because uh, that whole contrast between uh, the Lord um, bringing justice against sin right. you know, the unrighteousness that regularly confounds us uh, the justice comes and just the way the author of Lamentations is talking about. Uh, Almost, almost like Psalm 22, similar, uh, similar right. phrases. The the idea of being punished or rejected or, uh, you know, forsaken by God. Uh, but then just the 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 beauty that follows uh, there in in verses uh, 22 through um, 33. You know, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Yeah. Like how. I've, I've, I've regularly wondered how can this amazing passage of faith in God um, that his mercies are and they never come to an end they're new every morning great is your faithfulness how can anybody be praying that recognizing that to be true in the midst of all of this intense suffering and I think that's where uh, even in Peter, when Peter is talking about when people are going to be investigating the salvation that comes, and when people think about what exactly Jesus was able to do on the cross through the sufferings and then the glory, there's that line in there uh, on verse 12, things into which angels long to look, that there's a, there's a glory and a majesty that uh, even the angels that are in the presence of God on a regular basis are are themselves amazed at. Right. Um, 
it almost leaves me speechless. I probably should be speechless. What, what can you say to add to that? That uh, because of this amazing glory of salvation granted to people who who don't deserve it. Yeah. And yet he promises. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves. Right. I am holy, therefore you shall be holy. Right. And then when you read that in that context of that John passage, you know, I'll follow you to death. And Jesus almost puts him in his place and says, really? Because you're going to deny me three times. And of course, he doesn't believe him. But I think the beauty of that, and in that moment, Jesus puts his humanity, not his, uh, Peter's humanity on display saying, no, in fact, you won't. Right. Because the reality is, is, as humans, we aren't capable of doing what he did. And even though we're not capable, we know that he forgave Peter. Right. And even though Peter did that, all of these promises of hope and, and all of that, he forgave him and that still offered to him, even though in his humanity, we know that that was fulfilled. Right. And he did deny him, but it didn't matter because right. Jesus did what none of us could do. Right. Because he is holy. Right. Right. And, and so Peter denies in the Gospel of John, and now Peter writes in his letter, hey, don't, don't be like, yeah. <laughs> don't right. be like I used right. to be. Like, you know, it's like, right. yes, I did deny him, but now it's like, because, and it's exactly what you were saying, that, that Jesus had to do that which we could not do, right. but now that he has done it, how then does Peter respond? Peter responds with, hey, you know, be obedient like Christ was obedient. He's he's talking to himself as well, like every right. good pastor, right? You know, whenever you're preaching right. to somebody else, you have to be preaching against yourself. So Peter is preaching that whole idea of you can uh, move towards holiness. You can uh, work towards uh, that which God calls us to do, to be obedient children, not out of your own strength, not out of your own power. But if you are dependent on Christ to be doing that within you, and so uh, that's a that's an amazing connection. Hmm. Yeah, I really don't know what else there is to say. <laughs> we were ransomed. We were ransomed, right? Not with perishable things, but with the precious blood of Christ. Yeah. So we get to remember that tonight, uh, as we as we will have a service, a, a tenebrae service here at First Presbyterian tonight at five fifteen. Uh, the tenebrae being a service of darkness, where we uh, reflect upon uh, the final week of Jesus in Jerusalem as he moves towards betrayal, as he moves towards crucifixion, and how. Uh, where, where Jesus is acknowledging that the darkness that exists in the world uh, has, um, you know, has delegated power in a way that it's going to accomplish that which, which God intended it to accomplish. But ultimately, uh, we know the end of the story. So even on Good Friday, when we can uh, confess and when we can lament, uh, and when we can even hang our heads in shame a little bit, I think, recognizing that, you know, even Peter denied Jesus three times, that tendency in all of us to deny uh, the Christ that we know and love, um, we do get to look forward to Easter. We know the end of the story. And so even in the sorrow of tonight, uh, reflecting upon uh, the wickedness of this world, uh, I certainly hope that we will remain um, in a Lamentations chapter 3 mindset, as bad as things can be, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Yeah. Well, I'll just go ahead and close in prayer. <coughs> Unless you have anything else you want to say, is that true? Okay. okay. All, right. All right. Well, let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word to us today. Uh, thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for 
the steadfast love that you have exhibited throughout all of human history. Thank you for the mercies that you give that are new every morning. Lord, thank you that in you we can find forgiveness for that is, that is your nature. That is what you do. Um, Lord, I, I pray that you would continue to uh, strengthen us, that we can, be, uh, we can be like Peter from his letter and be uh, increasingly obedient to that which you've called us to do. That we can uh, move towards uh, being holy because you yourself are holy. But Lord, we can't do it on our own. We need your spirit. We need your love. Uh, and, we, and we continue to need your grace each and every day. So we thank you for this time. And uh, we ask, Lord, that, that you would bless it to your glory and for the building up of the community of faith. In your name, Jesus, we pray. So again, reminder tonight uh, here in the sanctuary, Tenebrae service at 515, and then on uh, then rest on Saturday. You know, there's uh, you know rest on Saturday. That's what it says in Scripture. They rested on the Sabbath, as was the commandment. And then uh, we've got a uh, Easter sunrise service at the Lake Lodge at 6:30, and then we have our worship service here at 10:30 in the sanctuary. You are invited to come to every event that we've got going on this weekend. I look forward to seeing you. And so I certainly hope that you have a blessed Easter weekend, and we'll look forward to seeing you again. Take care. Bye-bye.